welcome, and thank you so much for coming to our presentation today. I first want to say a big thank you to the Knight First Amendment Institute for organizing this wonderful event. It's truly a privilege to be here and be part of this wonderful symposium that's shedding light on the algorithms that seem to increasingly define the way we interact with the world and each other. But we don't have a lot of time here, so I think we should get started right away. We're really excited to show you what we've been working on for these past couple of weeks. All right, so I'm Samia. I am an undergraduate at Columbia. Where's Sahil? <laughs> Sahil. Sahil. <laughs> Sahil's yes. a graduate student at Columbia. And a couple of months ago, we were given a pretty big challenge. I think if we can make one conclusion from the symposium, it's that virality is far from a simple subject, even though it's a term we use all of the time. It's kind of deceptively familiar. But when we take all of the complex algorithms, content, types of engagement, and ways of defining virality, how do we move everything together and take this complex ecosystem into a digestible way of understanding it through visualization? Much more eloquently put, how do we visualize virality? And there were a lot of different things we had to assess before we could answer this question. So the first question that we had to tackle was which platform do we focus on? And we're a part of the Brown Institute, and Twitter is among the most popular things that journalists use, and that's kind of the plus one of why we chose Twitter. But one of the main reasons why we chose Twitter um, in the end was the accessible API that they provided that allowed us to get pretty much all the information that we needed to make our visualization. So search queries to look at the platform data, as well as um, looking at pretty much all aspects of a tweet. Um, people who interacted with it, likes, the person, the author, everything was available for us. Um, more on the API in a little bit, but other important aspects that we wanted to look at were the establishment. So Twitter is well established, and it's, it's the test of time. and. It has an interface that we can easily recreate in our visual. First question that we had to tackle was, what do we define virality? And we relied, with our, relied on Arvin on this, and we, we defined it as five times the, um, a, a content that has five times the engagement of the median tweet of the user. So the engagement for Twitter is number of likes, number of retweets, and number of replies. And a note on that definition for us came in when we realized that putting that um, user-specific definition was a little hard to decipher when looking at the whole platform because it has almost millions of users and um, we had to downsize our data set. So we put a threshold of 100,000 likes on there and um, this cut down on our information that we had to visualize as well as um, making the information a little more digestible. <clears throat> what is the, the data that we wanted to visualize? So we relied on the API. Um, if you guys didn't know, they are shutting down the API in about two days, and everything that I will cover in the next section, section in this section will be pretty much useless. So um, <laughs> when looking at the information that we wanted to look at for a viral tweet, we wanted to pretty much get a 360 view of it. So looking at exactly who it is that engaged with it, the people that authored the tweet, the information around them, as well as the time of the events. So when those engagements were made. So putting everything into context for allow us to, to allow us to make a better judgment on this, the, the network that we want to visualize. And Really, the network itself for us was more of a journey that we wanted to give people context to. So the journey that the, the tweet took to rack up all those engagements and how we got those engagements in. And we we've, we've, all have covered, covered this until, until now, but um, the, this journey is really just a bunch of network of roads and essentially a, a network data structure. So. To make this network data structure and piece it together using just, just the inf information that the API, the API provides us, um, 
we had to A, look at the time of the event, so the nodes themselves, as well as look at the follower relationships, relationships of the um, people that engage with it. So piecing all that together to allow us to make edges on those events and making this little network um, data structure. And next question that we had to kind of wrap our heads around and kind of moving into our methodology for the illustration, illustration itself, um, how we want to really focus on contextualizing virality. So this was the, the main, that main thing that we wanted to focus on was making sure that we keep the feed nature of um, Twitter um, intact when we, when we visualize it. So when we talk about our um, viewpoints on how Twitter manipulates people's um, feeds, we want to make sure that we hit on how people view those tweets when they are scrolling through Twitter. So that will, y'all will see in a little bit on how we approach that question, but we made sure we hit on that aspect. Uh, we hit on that aspect in the first place. Um, also looking at the, viral, the, the tweets themselves, we want to put some context around them. So looking at the categories that Twitter provides um, on their platform, um, entertainment, news, and um, politics, uh, uh, entertainment, news, and sports, and including all those information when we put that into contextual, uh, put, put that contextualizing, contextualization in front of the users. Um, also, the net network itself, as we've discussed, putting, piecing together this journey and illustrating that journey to the, the user. So all of those first parts that Saho mentioned were part of the onboarding process. So to actually have context to see that network structure that Saho was talking about, we need to make sure that people understand all of these background information about where virality comes from. And also when we're talking about the Twitter API, we cannot under, under evaluate how much work and effort and genius it took for Sahil to be able to go through the API while it was falling apart every couple of weeks. So we were able to get so much wonderful data and it's because of this man's wonderful script writing. So, all right, so let's go to the onboarding section. So like we mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that people can kind of take the familiarity they have with virality and kind of apply that to their understanding of virality through the context of this visualization. So because of that, we integrated key aspects of interacting with the social media platform into our visualization itself. So to interact with the visual, you simply scroll through it, like you'd be scrolling through your Twitter feed, looking for cat memes or whatever you're into. There's also a lot of visual nods to what a Twitter feed would look like, including having the tweets themselves on the page. And this is really helpful because we're introducing all of these new concepts and definitions of virality, including the five times the median engagement of a tweet, which can be a lot for somebody who's just going on a web page. So hopefully by seeing these tweets in a context in which they already understand what virality means, it can be a little helpful of a transition into the more complex things we're going to introduce to later. The second part um, that people are introduced to is a very important graphic, and that's sources of virality. This is an interactive stacked bar chart where we can see all of the different sources where virality comes from, and includes a lot of surprising statistics. I know that anybody can feel like, hey, maybe you're the next one who can go viral on Twitter, but unless you have more than a million followers, the likelihood is actually probably pretty low. Um, over one third of all viral tweets that we calculated actually come from people with more than one million followers. So what the stack bar chart does is it introduces you to all of the different categories, where viral tweets come from, the different account sizes, and also how many tweets actually are viral, which may be a lot fewer than you think. It also serves as a bridge to the more complex visuals. All right, another key aspect of our visualization is the concept of choice. Now, everybody likes agency when they use social media. As we've discussed a lot, everybody's used to a world with not much friction and everything extremely personalized to them, whether it's for better or for worse. However, we wanted to emulate at least a little bit of that experience on our visualization itself. So we took the three main categories, sports, entertainment, and news, and allowed users to toggle or choose in a category that interests them. 
But that's not just important just for the fun of the user. It's also vital when comparing data. Different categories and tweets from different categories kind of have different behaviors and can actually be very interesting to compare and contrast. So not only can users compare tweets across time, levels of demotion, but also across category, which at least we think is pretty interesting. Now, the heart of our visualization lies in the central network that maps several different dimensions within its frame. So there's versions of it with and without demotion, but most impactfully, it shows the sheer scale of how vari virality reaches different individuals. So the visualizing itself is kind of predicated on this illustration of a burst. And the burst is a metaphor for information propagation. For example, when you like or retweet a tweet, it gets sent to all of your followers in your feed. And that's shown by the little black dots throughout the network. Then when somebody else engages with it, that's shown as a burst. Each of the bubbles are also colored to identify their separation from the original poster. For example, the closer they are to the original poster, the more blue they are, the farther they are, they're red. So let's say I directly follow Tom Brady on this graph, I would be blue. Unfortunately, in reality, I am not blue. So I'm sorry for any Brady fans out there. So this is really interesting because you can find a lot of trends in here that we're gonna discuss afterwards. And when you get to play with demotion, you can see how the sheer color size and all of these different users all fade away, showing that just with a little bit of toggling in the algorithm, it can completely change whether or not something goes viral. So there's also a few key conclusions that we've gotten through these experiments. One, as I mentioned before, it's that not every account has an equal chance of virality. And that might seem obvious at first, but it's really, really staggering when we see the statistics that, as I mentioned earlier, over one third come from accounts with over one million followers. And I believe around 66% or around like two thirds come from very, very large accounts as well. I believe over around 100,000 followers. Also, we find out that direct followers are extreme and crucial drivers of the lifespan and overall virality of a tweet. You can see this if you go back to this network. In the beginning, the proportion is almost entirely blue, which is direct followers of the account. After it goes on, that's when the pinks and purples start to come in. Without having that boost from the direct followers and being able to engage with your direct network, you're not gonna see the success of other tweets. Looking at the, the motion itself and how we kind of approached um, explaining how Twitter manipulates your feeds, we found that the motion can have an extreme non-linear non um, relationship on how many engagements that the tweet will rack up. Um, looking at the categories themselves, so we looked at specifically tweets within the, within the three news and the news, sports, and entertainment categories. We found that there are many different relationships that kind of come about from being part of certain categories. Um, we hope to make this visualization public um, early next week, and we really hope that y'all will check out um, our visualization that we put so much effort into. I'm so sorry my voice <laughs> is really bad because I had to run from 103rd Street um, because the one, <laughs> the one train broke down, and I, <laughs> I had to make it here. But I'm th thank you so much for attending, and I hope y'all will check out our visual. Thank you, everyone.